Sony released a firmware update for the A9 II today, while Canon's working on an 8mm f4 fisheye for the RF system. Delivering informative capability-based reviews and tutorials on camera gear, filming techniques, and content creation. Hi, it's Simon from The Ordinary Filmmaker. If you're new here, please click subscribe and like as it really helps support my channel. And all the links to everything I talk about in this video, I'll include those in the description down below. Earlier today, Sony released firmware 2.0 for the Sony A7 IX Mark II with several enhancements and bug fixes, which is pretty much the norm for these sorts of things. What else are we going to do other than enhancements and bug fixes? One of the most noteworthy enhancements is the ability to close the shutter when you turn off the camera. This is really good because it helps reduce the amount of dust and debris that can adhere to the image sensor when you're changing lenses. Dust buildup has been a bit of a pain, and any reduction in this area is a welcomed improvement. At least, you don't have to worry about oil splashing onto the sensor from the shutter. Sony also added a high-frequency flicker function to reduce artificial light flickering from digital signage, electronic signboards, LEDs, and so on. This is accomplished by fine-tuning the shutter speed and is a welcomed addition. Now, on YouTube, this issue has tend to have been a little bit overblown and blown out of proportion. Sure, banding occurs with artificial lights or, in fact, when you're shooting into the sun, but it's not going to render every photo unusable. In most cases, the banding can be fixed in post, but any improvement is welcomed. If you do want to find out more, learn a bit more about banding, check out Wes Perry's video on image banding. The link to that is in the description down below. Face and eye priority autofocus also receive improvements. It can be activated or deactivated each time the custom button is pressed. It's a nice improvement. And other minor updates include improvements to the FTP transfer process, MAC addresses can be displayed as QR codes, and you can save or load the customized camera settings to My Menu, and of course, overall improvements to stability of the camera. Now on to other news. Canon News has uncovered a patent filing for the RF millimeter, or sorry, the RF 8mm f4. This is a fisheye. No further information was given on the site other than basically, you know, dimensions and that kind of thing. I personally don't care for fisheye lenses, and some of you might. I, I personally just don't like the look. I like to capture life as it happens, and that sort of warping towards the edges is not something that works well for me. And it's one of the reasons I tend to like going with the L series lenses on the EF platform because you get less of that distortion towards the edges. But this is a specialty lens designed for spe specific purposes like filming underwater, which I must admit would be still very appealing if I did practice scuba diving to this day, and I haven't done it in years. And it also reminds me of that movie by James Cameron in the late 80s or early 90s called um, The Abyss. There's something about a fisheye lens underwater, it just says, the depths of the ocean, and, and as, it, as I just mentioned, it brings, takes me back to that movie, The Abyss. But it's a specialized lens, so it's good news. The RF platform is getting another lens, so it's a great year for Canon, uh, that's for sure. That's silly. I'm just making stuff up. On this segment of Behind the Scenes, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about using a single camera. If you've been subscribing to me for a long time, thank you very much. If you haven't, please go ahead and click subscribe and like. The reason I mention that is if you've been with me for a long time, if you've subscribed to me, then you know I'm shooting with a Canon 70D. You'll also know that it's my only camera, so I use it here as a studio camera, but I also use it for my run and gun. And when I finish with this video today, I'll probably change the lens, put on the, the, the I think it's the 17 or 18 to 135. I get it mixed up because I used to have the 17 to 85 and I get them all mixed up over time. But anyhow, I'm going to put up the lens because that's my run and gun lens because we're probably going to have an Easter egg hunt tomorrow unless the weather turns south and I'll do it the next day. And what I tend to do, sometimes I'll forget to put it into manual mode again when I start shooting. Or, as I did yesterday, I forgot to tilt the camera back up. So my son wants to do a channel. He's, he's watching me, seeing what I'm doing. And he wanted to do a Lego uh, video for his YouTube channel. So I set him up down here. I tilted the camera down a bit more. I adjusted the tripod. And while I looked in the viewfinder, not the viewfinder, sorry, the LCD through live view, things didn't look too bad. But the problem is I left the info on the screen, so it's very hard to see around the edges. I recorded yesterday's video and published it, and I was very unhappy with the results. I felt like I'd just gone back a month in quality. 
the top of my head was chopped off. Um, it, things just weren't positioned very well. And the, you'd be surprised at how many times things like this go on. Yes, I do have checklists, but sometimes we forget to use our checklist or sometimes we think, hey, I've been doing this a long time. I've got this covered. To this day, I've got over 100 videos that I've shot since I started this channel five months ago. But I think the key is putting the checklist on my stands here and looking at them before I start because I shot that entire video and I almost thought of redoing it. I had it in the computer, I had things set up, I had some of the filters applied and I was ready to just start reshooting. But it was late, I was tired and I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna put it out there and hope for the best. And sure, it wasn't the best looking video and sure I got some comments and rightfully so. It was a step back in quality. This is where checklists really come in. This is where they help us out. And if you ever get to that point and say, you know, I don't need a checklist. I'm a pro. I've been doing this for years. You haven't been doing it for years because if you have been doing it for years, unless you've got a perfect memory like some of my viewers do, you are going to forget things. You're going to forget to put something in your bag. You're going to forget to change a setting. I really did wish, I really do wish I had other camera bodies. I am planning on buying either the R5 or the R6 when it comes out uh, this summer. And that will help because now I can have a dedicated camera for run and gun and a dedicated camera for YouTube. And I'm really looking forward to that. But that's all I have to say today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, have a happy Easter. Have a great long weekend if you're in the West um, or if you're practicing Ramadan, happy Ramadan. Guys, just have a great weekend and we'll see you again soon. Thank you for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. All equipment used and notes are placed in the description box, show more box, or down arrow thingy next to the title on the mobile app.